<clears throat> Shalom Warren Brothers, once again from GMS Mississippi camp, this is uh, GMS Myth Destroyers. I'm Awar, this is Zaha. Zaha. Alright, and today's lesson is basically going over violence in the scriptures. And basically that the Lord works with the uh, righteous violence. And he causes violence. And because you have this uh this saying or basically people walking around saying that the Lord wouldn't do that. Why would the Lord be with guys like us who want to uh, a bunch of racists who want to uh, kill uh, so-called white people and rape their women? <laughs> Why would the Lord be uh, allow something like that? The Lord is love, all love. But yeah, the Lord is all love, but you're forgetting uh, one thing. Get Exodus 15 and 3. There's a balance. There's no way that you can just be all love. In order to know what love is, you have to know what hate is. And you also have to know what the other feelings are, too. You have to know what mad, sad, all that is, in order for you to love somebody. That's how you know what love is. Because if you never experienced being sad, how do you know if you're happy all the time? Exodus 15 and 3. The power is a man of war. The Most High is his name. Read it verbatim. Exodus 15 and 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Exactly. Uh, how is a man of war? How is his name? Alright. The Lord is a man of war, man. And the Lord doesn't play. Alright? And when it comes to this kingdom, you think the Lord going to be playing with it? No. He's not going to play with this kingdom. This kingdom is going to go down, man. Somebody get Revelation. You get Revelation 18 and uh, 21, brother. Revelation chapter 18 verse 21. violence is in the scriptures. And the Lord will plainly show you that it's going to be violence, man. Like that rock and roll song, say, let the bodies hit the floor. Well, the body's going to be hitting the floor, man. And you ain't going to be hearing it from no song. It's going to be real life where you're going to see it. And that's about to happen in America very soon. One day, I already talking about America about to run out of money again. And the Euro. Euro. Again, they just did that uh, back in August. Going back into a recession. So what they going to do now? Then, you got riots up on Wall Street that they blocking out from the news. Cops dragging people out in the middle of the street and stuff. And you, I know that guy in New York, he quick to put martial law down. And that, that thing again. Yeah, that damn devil. He quick to put martial law down. Matter of fact, he was quoted saying that martial law is better. So you already know where this is heading. So body's about to drop in America, man. But that's, that's just the uh, transition for America to be on its way out. Just the stuff that you're going to see. See, we're the realistic people. You want to have this big fairy tale. When you think of the Lord from a fairy tale point of view, you get fairy tale outcomes. The Lord's love, he's going to come floating from a pink cloud coming down here. And as soon as the whole world sees him, they're going to believe and they're going to love the Lord. Everybody's going to change then. He's coming to save everybody. What about these pedophiles? What about these atheists? What about these Satan worshippers who want to fight against the Lord? So you telling me when they see the Lord coming down from that pink cloud, or whatever these people are ready to bring the whole world together and make everyone equal, which is damn sure not in the scriptures, making everybody equal. 
Uh, and you know why they mainly want to make everybody equal? And so Israel won't be exalted. That's all it is. You heathen nations ain't even equal with Esau, man. No. Esau, Esau, Lord, and God. Right. It's like it, brother. And that don't even make sense because if everybody can be saved in Revelation 2 and, uh, what is it, 26, 27, who's going to be ruled over with a rod of iron? You know? Right. Who's going to rule with the, well, Psalm chapter 2, uh, who's going to uh, possess the earth? Who, who the Lord going to get a heathen to if everybody's saved? Some heathen got to be given to somebody. Well, that means that the prophecies are not going to come. This is not true. And who is he going to save us from? Right. But yeah, you know what he is going to save the real men of the Lord from? Lord will, that's us. He's going to save the real men of the Lord from violence. <laughs> because it ain't nothing but violence in the scriptures that's about to happen. Go ahead. Revelation 18 and 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. And Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. So yeah, the Lord already let you know, hey, I'm about violence. And is it a righteous name for Babylon to be thrown down? Yeah. Right. So for the Lord to say, thus with violence, shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, what does that show you? The most high gets down. Right. The most high going to get down on them, man. It's going to be bloodshed. It's going to be killing. And it don't, it don't matter, man. And if you don't like it, you die. I got something. It's called, it's called righteous indignation, man. Righteous judgment. Alright, finish that off and get your priest up. It shall be found no more at all. Alright. You get Daniel 7 and 18. Go ahead, brother. Psalm 56 and verse 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Exactly. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. Okay, what, what vengeance are we finna see? Have I ever seen vengeance that doesn't require uh, violence? You, you, vengeance requires violence, man. And then it said we're gonna wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. So what is it? Blood. That doesn't mean it's gonna be a puddle of blood and we gonna be, uh, you know, wiping our feet in it. No, that just means we're going to have, there's going to be basically so much blood on our hands of, of, from the so-called white man and the other nations that you could just about wash your feet in it, man. Bask in it, basically. All right. And that's all part of violence. Go ahead. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Right. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. How, how are we going to take the kingdom, brother? By force. <laughs> By force, which means violence. Yep. Think the white man just going to hand it over? No, the so-called white man and these other nations ain't going to just willingly hand over the, uh, the whole earth. No, they're not going to hand it over. We're going to have to take it from them. And we're going to have to take it from them by violence, man. And along with that, there's going to be other violence going on in the earth. As far as uh, famines, uh, uh, race riots. And I, this is just, wow, uh... America's about to go down, man. We haven't even got into the slavery part of violence. <laughs> what the Lord gonna let us do uh, to these other nations? Y'all 
got three subs. Yeah. Go ahead. Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. Right, he told us to suffer it patiently. And he's giving us a reason why we gonna, why to uh, suffer patiently this uh, hell that we enduring right now. Go ahead. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. We're going to tread upon his neck, man. It's called violence, man. They, they, people say they want to wish for world peace. No more fighting, no more violence. But how is that going to even come? Violence. That has to come through violence. They even show, they show you that in movies. Peace and change doesn't come without violence. Because you got the devil on this side who wants his new world order full of violence and we want to uh, wipe all of them out and get the kingdom built up to establish no violence. So yeah, sacrifices must be made. <laughs> sacrifices must be made. And when you're talking about the heathen, it's not even really a sacrifice. You deserve to die anyway. Two-thirds, you deserve to die anyway for not uh, wanting the kingdom. For not wanting the true righteousness of the Most High to uh, come across the whole universe, man. You, you, you deserve to die for that. That's why when we go out on the highways, we'll be talking about, we'll, we'll get up on our people for a little while, but then we'll get so disgusted by you ignoring the word right in front of our face that we'll just start uh, talking about America being destroyed and how you going right along with it. Because the Lord told us to tell you whether you're here for better. And once we get it that you ain't listening, okay, we're going to let you know your judgment. Alright, got something? Yeah, uh, Go ahead. Zephaniah 3 and 8, it says, Therefore wait ye upon me, said the Most High, until the day that I rise up up, up to the prey. So if, if you're going to rise up to the prey, what you're going to do? You're going to attack. Who's the prey? Esau and other nations. Yup, go ahead. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Exactly, the fire of the Lord just. Matter of fact, get Isaiah 34. Start at the top. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 1. Come near, ye nations, to hear. And hearken. This is the Lord right here. This is the Lord. Top, go ahead. And hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein. The world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Most High is upon our nations, and his fury upon all their armies. And, and to be specific, this is the Lord speaking through uh, Isaiah the prophet. Alright, go ahead. He hath utterly destroyed them, he hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also should be cast exactly. out. Exactly, who delivered them to the slaughter? The Lord did, man. Go ahead. Their slain also should be cast out. They, and they had this thing with a slaughterhouse. For the animals and all that, it's going to be a big slaughterhouse for heathens in two-thirds. So if you can't get it through your head that the Most High is a, uh, well, actually he's balanced. He's love, he has hate, peace, and he has violence. Uh, who, who got Ecclesiastes chapter 3? Because, like, you get that, Ecclesiastes chapter there's a time for peace, a time for war. Well, a time for love, and there's a time for hate. All right, finish that off. Verse 3. Their slain also should be cast out, and their stinks should come up out of their carcasses. All right, then the Lord, you know, he going to get so nasty with it. He goes into detail. Your stink going to come up out of your carcasses. 
Then in Ezekiel 30, 39, he goes into deeper detail. We're going to stack your bodies. We're not going to bury you. We're going to let the birds eat you. If you don't know how vicious that sounds, especially to be back in those times to hear that because it's an honor to be buried. Nobody wanted, if, if you found a guy who, who was dead, like a dead Israelite or something on the side of the road, we used to get him and go bury him. So basically, these people, they're not going to get buried. Matter of fact, we're going to just find the rest of their people who, who live it. And, and uh, suffer out continuing employment, man. Let them work for us for zero dollars and zero cents an hour, man. Plus taxes. <laughs> yeah, plus taxes. <laughs> Yep, and we still taking taxes out the check, man. Yep. So I guess actually they owing us money. So they gotta pay tribute to make up for what they what they not having in the check, bro. So yeah, and they gonna be stacking the bodies, man. It's gonna be a big order. Alright. Finish the verse off. Yeah, do you want me to continue? Verse oh, four. okay. Alright, bro. Yeah, finish verse four. Alright. Verse 4, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's nuclear destruction. It don't get more violent than that, man. Rolled together as a scroll, big mushroom cloud. That looks just like a scroll, man. Go ahead. And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth out from the vine, and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. Mm -hmm. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Exactly. It's going to come, uh, come down upon the so-called white man, the people of his curse. And they are cursed. They'll walk in curse. They call everybody else. They try to say, now they try to come out with stuff like white is beautiful and all that BS. But they're the curses, that they, and they try to make fun of anybody with color. But if they haven't noticed... I don't know if you've been so high and mighty and up there on the top for so long, but you're the only people on earth without any color, man. Black convict cigarette. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we was looking at a fish yesterday, and it was named the Black Convict Cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, what type of name is that, man? Why would you name something the Black Convict, man? Right, you trying to roast on the fish? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stigma, man. Alright, that's all I wanted. Right. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, start at 1. Uh, yeah, you can start at 1. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Right, this, this is how you know the Most High is perfectly balanced, man. There's a season, and there, there's a season at a time. Alright? There's a time for certain things, and there's not a time for certain things. And it, it evens all out. Just like all the animals on the earth. Did you know, if you take away one of the animals from the earth, that's going to mess the whole balance up, man. And probably uh, the whole population of earth is about, is going to be on the brink of destruction after that, man. Like with the uh, honeybees. Yep. You, when you take away a bee from the earth, we'll all die in the uh, 